Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inconvenient Truths. I'm your host, Jennifer Zheng. We all know that China's economy is in serious trouble. But how serious is the problem? When will the tipping point be reached for the complete collapse of the CCP's finances? And what could Xi Jinping do after a full financial collapse? Today, let's talk about this. In August, China's economy hit a critical point. The government's monthly budget income took a sharp drop. Let's check out some data summarized by a Chinese economist named Lao Man. These are monthly comparisons of China's public budget income from January to August 2022 and this year. First, remember these are the CCP's own numbers, so they may not be entirely reliable. But when we look at the comparison between this year and last year, we can still find some trends. Another thing is that compared with the often exaggerated GDP figures, the fiscal revenue figures should be relatively more reliable. Because if you re exaggerate the fiscal revenue, the public will ask, where have you spent all the month, all this money? In January and February this year, due to the sudden lift of COVID lockdowns and the long Chinese New Year holiday, most industries and government departments were either closed or half closed. As a result, the income for these two months combined was 56.1 billion yuan, less than the same period in 2022. Afterward, China's economy had a brief recovery. At the same time, last year's deferred value added tax was paid this year, boosting tax revenue. So in the following months, March and April, China's financial data looked very impressive. Each month had significant increases, especially April, with an astonishing 8 157.4 billion yuan ended. The CCP authorities must have felt very confident at this point, thinking they had the whole world in, this hand, in their hands, believing there was no difficulty they couldn't overcome. However, starting in May with the weakening of China's economy, despite the deferred value and its tax payment, almost all other tax revenues began to shrink significantly. Monthly budget income quickly lost its growth, with the revenue difference dropping to 400 billion yuan in May, 110 billion yuan in June, just over 30 billion yuan in July, and in August, the difference became negative. Compared to August last year, this August income was down by 60 billion yuan. So obviously, August is, an is a turning point for China's physical revenue. Now, let's look at some specifics. Apart from the value added tax, most items have shrunk dramatic dramatically. From January to August, non-tax revenue de decreased by 3.6%, which includes fines, meaning now the economy is so bad that they can't even fine people anymore. Consumption tax fell by 9%, showing the real state of consumption. People just aren't spending. And of course, the tax on those expenditures has decreased too. Corporate income tax fell by 70 by 7.6 percent, meaning companies aren't making much profit anymore. Individual income tax fell by 0.1 percent, not a huge drop, but it's the first time it's gone down after adjusts in the way it's connected. This signifies a historic moment. It means ordinary people's incomes are dropping, which hasn't happened since, China's, since China joined the WTO. So this is another indicator of a turning point. 
imports value added tax, consumption tax, and export tax rebates all decreased together. These three sets of data complement each other, showing that China's exports are losing momentum. Stamp duty tax decreased by 8.9% with a 29 drop in security transaction stamp, stamp tax showing a direct result of the decreased financial activities. Resource tax declined by 14%, indicating a clear downward trend in commodity prices, signaling an uh, economic decline. Urban land use tax, land ad value added tax, and land occupation tax decreased simultaneously, reflecting the downturn in the real estate market. Environmental protection tax decreased by 2.2%, indicating reduced economic and operational activities and decreased waste emissions. So looking at these trends, it's clear that the rigid decline in public budget income, mainly from tax revenues, will persist for a long time and only re reverse in the short term. Another major source of physical revenue, land use rights sales income, is also experiencing several contraction. In 2022, land use rights sales income decreased by 40 by 23.3 percent and from january to august this year it decreased by 19.6 percent considering the cold reality of the real estate market the decrease in land use rights sales income is likely to continue in the long term with both tax revenues and land use rights sales income decreasing simultaneously, the huge negative impact on China's physical revenue is impossible to overcome. Lao Man believes that starting from August, China's physical revenue will inevitably enter a long-term contraction channel. The impact of fiscal revenue contraction on the Chinese economy will certainly surpass the contraction in all other industries. Now, Matt says that essentially the Chinese government is like a business, and it's a business that can only make profits and not incur losses. Now, the government's cash flow is shrinking, but government expenditures have always been rigid. Pensions, civil servant salaries, infrastructure construction, and more, these expenses can only increase, not decrease. Additionally, the government needs more money for infrastructure development to boost economic growth. Therefore, the Chinese authorities have always implemented a deficit fiscal policy. For example, in the three years from 2020 to 2022, the cumulative physical deficit reached 23.6 trillion yuan, while in the previous 10 years, it was only 19.5 trillion yuan. The physical deficit scale for January to August this year is 4.3 trillion yuan, and it's expected to exceed 7 trillion for the whole year. Looking at the table, you can see that the total deficit column has been expanding continually. The physical deficit to revenue ratio, which is the total deficit divided by total revenue, has also been on the rise for over a decade. Now look at the rightmost two columns showing the insurance scale of national bonds and local government bonds. To cover the deficit, the CCP authorities have continuously adopted a frantic borrowing model. Currently, the combined balance of national bonds and local government bonds exceeds 65 trillion yuan. When you add in city invest, invest, 
city investment bonds and the operational debt of public institutions, the total debt scale surpasses 100 trillion yuan. The above information is based on economic data released by the CCP. And uh, what are the actual situations like in daily life? Let's take a look at a few examples. This is a notice posted outside a public restroom in Kunming, the capital city of Yunnan province. The notice says this public restroom was originally open for free with the municipal government allocating funds to pay for water, electricity, cleaning staff wages and other expenses to maintain daily operations. However, since January 2022, the government has not allocated the relevant funds. As a result, the public restroom can no longer be kept open for free to ensure the normal operation of this public restroom. It has been decided to resume charging from today. The date of this notice is June 19th of this year, and the fee is half yuan per use. This post published on the Chinese social media platform Weibo states that civil servant, servants in Nanjing, the capital city of Jiangsu province, have started to go unpaid. Jiangsu province is the second wealthiest province in terms of GDP in China, but civil servants in the provincial capital are now going unpaid, and various district governments are having to borrow money to pay salaries. In Gaochun district, Nanjing, last month, all civil servants couldn't receive their salaries and, to, and had to borrow from Jinnan district. Jiangnan District Government with the help of the city government's coordination. Li Shui District is also expected to be unable to pay salaries. Furthermore, teachers, healthcare workers, and researchers in Nanjing's public institutions were faced pay cuts and layoffs. Civil servants were also faced pay cuts and layoffs. In the past, the Chinese referred to civil servant service positions as iron rice bowls, believing they provided the most job security. Now, these iron rice bowls are also being shattered. This chat record says that civil servants in Yunnan province are also not receiving their salaries. This notice, sorry was issued by the Dongkou County Bus Company in Yun, Hunan province on September 23rd. In essence, it states that the local government has not provided subsidy, subsidies for three years, resulting in significant op operational losses for the bus company. They own their employees over 10 million yuan in unpaid wages and pension insurance. Therefore, they have decided to suspend all bus routes starting from September 30th. This post states that in March 2023, the Hebei District government in Tianjin City had no money to pay salaries. They borrowed several billion yuan from a Buddhist temple called Da Bei Yuan to sustain themselves. However, by July, they ran out of money again and asked Da Bei Yuan for more funds. Da Bei Yuan declined, stating that in thousands of years, it has always been that the secular society donating money to temples, not the other way around. Why is the government, government now asking for more from us? This is utterly ridiculous. As a result, on September 11, 2023, the Hebei District in Tianjin convened a meeting of various departments, including public security, judiciary, 
Fire Department, Urban de Management, Health, and Industrial and Commerce to carry out a so-called special rectification in the area where Da Beiyuan is located, seeking retaliation against Da Beiyuan for refusing to lend money. Isn't this a huge joke? This report from Menon official media states that the Tianjin public transportation system has been denying payments to employees since June this year, not paying a single cent and not providing insurance to employees either. The public transportation system primarily relies on government subsidies to incur nearly and incurred nearly 700 million yuan in losses last year. Not only in Tianjin, but a similar situation has also arisen in Beijing. In Beijing's Shunyi district, they have had to borrow money from Chaoyang district to pay salaries. This post says that retirement pensions for retired teachers in Guangzhou city have been nearly halved. The poster mentions that her mother is a retired teacher from a university in Guangzhou. Her mother's retirement pension was almost 8,000 yuan per month. But last week, they were informed that the retirement pensions for all retired teachers have been reduced by half. Her mother's pension was now dropped to 500, uh, 5,000 Oh, oh, sorry, 4,500 yuan. And even the retiree with the highest pension in the entire school has seen, has seen their pension decrease from 9,000 to 5,000 yuan. This post was made only yesterday. The video shows that urban this video shows that urban management police in Maomin City, Guangdong province, are also protesting. The banner they hold reads, the new officials don't recognize old agreements, give back our jobs. From... Sorry. From the content, it's clear that these individuals have likely been laid off. Urban management police are a tool used by various cities to suppress the public on behalf of the government. And it appears that the CCP can no longer afford to maintain them. The above information is just some random information I found on social media. However, it indicates that the situation is already very bad. All across China, from the capital to small towns, from north to south, they are experiencing the same financial difficulties. And there is another factor to bear in mind. In 2022, China was still under strict lockdown. Now, the revenues this year are even lower than they were in 2022. What does that mean? Next, the CCP will finally have to face the situation of a rigid decline in physical revenue, meaning a significant shrink in government cash flow, likely leading to a cash flow interruption. So, what will the CCP do in this situation? Lao Man believes that the CCP authorities have only two choices. The first is to let their own cash flow break, allow local debts to default, witness the bankruptcy of local finances, and even the failure to pay salaries to local civil servants. They would be unable to maintain all normal administrative order, and even the police departments would be unable to handle cases properly, leading to chaos in the entire society. The second choice is to continue printing money, recklessly resulting in crazy inflation. 
choosing this path would essentially be for the survival of their finances, robbing the wealth of all Chinese people, ultimately leading to economic collapse and people's misery. The public would either resist or be forced into hardship. Lao Man believes that given the backdrop of a pronounced decline in physical revenue, the CCP authorities have only these two choices. Lao Man says if a third option must be considered, it's the one that terrifies everyone, war. Initiating a war and it must a full-scale war with a large with a scale not enough to keep the entire country the, the entire country's economic machine running. Former PLA Navy Corner Corner Yao Chen who was a staff officer in the CCP's Navy headquarters, believes that Xi Jinping is currently facing increasing pressure from within the party and internationally. This situation, if sustained, could make Xi Jinping feel sophisticated. He has only two choices. First, to give up power and step down, which is currently unlikely. Second, to choose war at a last resort. Once a war begins, he can implement military control internally, silencing any opposition. Otherwise, strict wartime regulations will be enforced. Externally, he believes that he has millions in his army and a population of 1.4 billion. He can mobilize the entire nation at any cost. And what can the U.S. do? do to stop him. Therefore, regardless of how the U.S. and Japan may intervene, this war is already set in motion. Once he seizes Taiwan, his rule will be solid, solidified forever. Yao Chen believes that the fundamental reason for the purge of the PLA's rocket force and equipment development department is the top-down elimination of those who fear war. Some argue that this is due to the extreme corruption within the rocket force and equipment development, development department, which has led to a decline in comeback combat capabilities, jeopardizing Xi Jinping's plans to attack Taiwan. It is said that Xi Jinping was so angered that he, arrest, he arrested almost 200 people inside the army. Yao Chen states that currently the PLA Air Force has reached 100 brigades and the number of Navy warships can reach nearly 500 within three years short, medium, and long-range missiles, as well as long-range artillery, can execute precise surgical strikes in multiple waves, leaving Taiwan defenseless. When the time is right, they may attempt a massive crossing of the Taiwan Strait, sending thousands of boats simultaneously. The South China Sea, East China Sea, Yellow Sea, and China-India border issues will be temporarily, temporarily set aside as they break through the first island chain, posing direct threats to the U United States, Japan, and South Korea. This strategy aims to gain a strategic advantage by taking the lead, ensuring they stay ahead afterwards. In the game of the go, this strategy is called one move alive. Every move hereafter will be alive. Previously, there were also warnings that the CCP might suddenly launch a strong offensive using a large number of civilian fishing vessels catching the international community off guard. So even based on the CCP's own data, it is clear that the path the party's path to financial bankruptcy is already set. What we need to observe and pay attention to is how the CCP will respond after financial bankruptcy and whether they will indeed launch a war. Recently, there have been two pieces of concerning news. 
Why is that Shi Zhengli, the bad woman from Wuhan Institute, Institution of Virology, has just warned against another potential deadly pandemic? Another is that Zhao Lanjie, a former Chinese journalist, has revealed that according to his source in China, Xi Jinping's power is still very solid and stable, and she is planning something very big together with Russia. However, he doesn't have the details about what Xi Jinping is planning exactly. For me, this sounds alarming. How about you? Leave us a comment if you have any thoughts. Well, that's all for today. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and double check if you are still subscribed. If you enjoy my content, please kindly share my channel and videos and visit my website at jenniferzongblog.com. That's jenniferzongblog.com for membership or donations to show your support. Thank you. See you next time.